Greetings, Internet, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Musician Reacts. My name is Insane Ian, I am a comedy musician and comedy music fan, and on this show I react to comedy music from the perspective of a comedy musician, because that is what I am, that is what I do, and that is why you're here. Supposedly. Anyway, this week we are going to be reacting to the brand new epic rap battles of history, Laura Croft vs. Indiana Jones. I'm very excited for this. I love ERB. I love comedy hip-hop stuff. It's kind of what I do, too. Uh, this is If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, just as a heads up, I pause so that I can react to the song and not talk over the lyrics, uh, so that I can not miss any jokes that way. So if this is your kind of thing, if you do enjoy this content, please like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the things that feed the algorithm to get the eyeballs on these videos so they get more views and whatnot. And if you really want to help the channel out, consider supporting me on Patreon, where patrons get these videos early, get my music early, get their names in the credits, exclusive Patreonic-only uh, reactions, and all sorts of other cool things like that there. Great, I haven't noticed that my Dropbox is full. Oh, cool, thanks. Um, anyway, enough dilly-dallying. Let's dive into this. Uh, yes, it is the week before Halloween. This is going live on the Friday before Halloween for most of my viewers. There will be Halloween reactions coming up, but most of them came out too late for me to record them for this week. Uh, one is actually airing, coming out tonight, so I'll be reacting to those next week. Patrons will get those on Monday, on Halloween. Everybody else will get the mess on Friday as usual. Just a heads up. Okay, let's dive into this. Personally, uh, I've wanted to do a battle of Laura Croft versus Nathan Drake, uh, because they're both video game characters, um, and have Indy come in later. But uh, this one makes sense, of course, because Laura had always been compared to being the... Uh, Indiana Jones of video games before Nathan Drake came along. So, yeah, let's dive in. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, it's sponsored. Okay. Laura Croft! In the classic original Laura Croft outfit of the teal tank top and booty shorts with the leg strap uh, gun holsters. The, the twin guns, not the newer, updated, reboot version. Um, both of which are great. I, I really dig the update. I've, I've played through the first two of those. Um, but good stuff. Let's get this battle cracking. <laughs> I, uh... Uh, nice Peter as as Indiana Jones is is not quite what I was expecting, and the voice is almost Rambo deep. Uh, what he played Rambo, it's kind of kind of that uh, into it. Uh, so it's not quite what I was expecting for a voice. Not sure if he does a decent Harrison Ford impression. You know who does do a decent Harrison Ford impression? Mark Hamill. Very weird, but you know, awesome. Uh, yeah, let's let's reel that back just a little bit because he let's get it cracking. Of course, the crack of the whip. Let's get this battle crap and leave you like a reboot flattened. You. <laughs> leave you like your reboot flattened. I just I don't know why I paused right there. I'm sorry. This one that was an unnecessary pause. I do slip of the finger, whatever. That sounded inappropriate, I didn't mean to. To be the queen of booby trapping. What happened? You got too woke to be fun. Now my Indiana kind of don't want that. Got too woke to be fun? Uh, what? How? How? And is that Indiana saying that, or is that Harrison Ford saying that? I don't think it's the writers, because they, they write as part of the battle. But that... That doesn't make sense. Reboot got flattened. I don't, I don't think that's true, because the reboot did well. The, the reboot movie maybe not did, did great. Um, I really enjoyed the reboot movie. It was going to get a sequel, and then their, light, their, their license rights went away from the studio that had it, and now they can't do a sequel to it because it doesn't belong to the same studio. Uh, which sucks, but is what it is. Um, let's take that back, because that, that bit was weird. Let's get this battle cracking. I'll leave you like a reboot flattened. You used to be the queen of booby trapping. Booby trapping, because everybody tried to put in a nude code in uh, Tomb Raider. A nude code that didn't exist, but that all the gaming magazines pretended, like, here, here, here is actually is. 
And, uh, and then the developers put in one that they said was a nude code, and it just made Laura blow up. Like, explode. Uh, very good stuff. It was a booby trap. Get it? Ha ha, funny. What happened? You got too woke to be fun. Now my Indy Anaconda don't want that. Indy Anaconda? Like, my Anaconda don't want none unless you got Buns Hun from Sir mix lots Baby Got Back. Uh, Indy Anaconda. That's... Alright, sure. Lost too many voices inside you. You burn through women quicker than I do. I think you should have dropped Hollywood as an option. When even Angelina gave you up for adoption. Oof. Ooh. Okay, too many voices inside your head. It's like several different actresses have played, have voiced her in the games and also have played her in the movies. Angelina Jolie famously was the first Laura Croft for the movies. Uh, that was Laura Croft's Tomb Raider. The new the Tomb Raider reboot was just called Tomb Raider. It was uh, Alicia Vikander. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And, and yeah, Angelina didn't come back for that one, obviously, because it was a reboot. It was supposed to be a younger Laura. Uh, but giving her up for adoption when, when Angelina herself adopts a lot of children. That's the flip there. That's decent. Let's cut to the chase. Oh, wait, he died. I guess you couldn't bet that at some time. Ooh, we put a QTE inside the video. Ch cut to the chase. Chase died. Very good. <laughs> From the bandicoot? Bandicoot to your family's playing in ashes, kid. You got a tragic history of a crash. <laughs> okay, we're going through all the history of the games. I'm trying to beat, figuring out why you're dressed for the beach. You see more class than the kids that teach. You can rise all you want, and I'm still out of reach. Rise of the Tomb Raider was the... No, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was the last one. Rise of the Tomb Raider is the one in the middle of the new three rebooted ones. So go grab your relics and run! You verse me, is sword versus God. Honey, just the first four notes of my theme exceed everything you've done. I mean, it's John Williams' theme, so that's, it's not untrue. But didn't, uh, in the movie when Indiana shot the guy with the sword, wasn't the whole reason that happened is because uh, Harrison Ford had dysentery that day and they didn't feel like chore choreographing it, so they just had him shoot him instead of having to do a whole big fight scene? I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the version I heard. Dr. Jones, you're no rival. You've been getting owned since Gimme the Whip, Throw Me the Idol. Indiana Conda, for <laughs> heaven's sake, you'd shit those dickies at a garter snake. <laughs> okay, this is a that is an excellent re return on that because Indiana Jones, of course, notoriously afraid of snakes. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? So Indiana Conda, it's a terrible line because you're afraid of snakes. You you crap your pants, your dickies. It's a style of pants at a pair of, at, at a garter snake. And also, that goes back to, like, a garter snake, like a, a garter belt leg, like a, the lacy leg thing. Garter, pants, dickies, garter, garter snake. Uh, it's all interwoven shit there. That's decent. Uh, Gimme the Whip from the Idol is from the first movie. Uh, it's a, an exchange between him and Alfred Molina, a very young Alfred Molina, uh, it being betrayed in the opening of the movie. Throw me the idol. Indiana Conda, for heaven's sake, you'd shit those dickies at a garter snake. You saw the famous other daddy jacket and Stetson from the cold dead hands of Charlton Heston. <laughs> Stole the leather jacket and Stetson from the cold dead hands of Charlton Heston. Uh, Charlton Heston famously uh, was the was an actor, but also was the uh, president of the National Rifle Association. Uh, the NRA, and once said, you can take this gun from me when you pry it from my cold, dead hands. Uh, and also, I think, didn't, did Heston play Alan Quartermain? Because Alan Quartermain was a, was a serial, was a, a pulp novel, and, uh, I think the, um, Indiana Jones is kind of loosely based on that, like, it, it takes a lot of notes, from at least from adventure serials like that, if, if they had any Alan Quartermain serials. I know they had later movies in the 80s of Alan Quartermain, uh, 80s and 90s, and of course Alan Quartermain shows up as played by Sean Connery in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, where they take a lot of literary heroes and put them into a, a superhero team, uh, 
it's a comic by Alan Moore and that's better that way rather than the, the movie. Because the movie got optioned before the comic was finished and then Sean Connery saw the finished comic and went, I'm, a, I'm an opium addict? No, I don't want that. Let's, we're going to change that and let's put in an American character. The studio said, let's put in an American character because all of these books are British. We need an American for American audiences. And so they added Tom Sawyer or Huck Finn, one of the two. I forget which one. As an FBI agent. That's weird. Anyway, that was a tangent that happened. Sean Connery played Indiana Jones' dad. That's the through line. You're welcome. Okay. It's Charlton Heston, though, not ranting. Some ladies mistake you for brave and hunky, but you're such a toxic date, you could kill a little monkey. Ooh, bad dates. Yeah, he's such a toxic date, because the dates were poisoned. Uh, the little monkey comes in and to eat, is eating the dates that are poisoned, and the monkey dies, and Indy's about to take one, and Sala grabs it and crushes it before it falls into his mouth and goes, bad dates, and you look over and the monkey's dead. Sad. That's in the second movie. I know my shit. Marion is 15 when you rated her bro. That's no time for love, Dr. Jones. Also true. They say it in the first movie. It's it becomes uncomfortable when you realize the age difference. Yeah. No time for love, Dr. Jones is from the second movie. Uh, that's what uh, Short Round says to him. But uh, yes, the the alluding to the fact that Marion was 15 when they met and he was not near the age of 15 was much older. Wrong. Okay. One temple that you'll never be exploring. You're not John Williams, so you ain't scoring. That's, that's a second reference to John Williams and and his music for the Indiana Jones movies. Oh look, there's the reboot outfit. Nice. Even the game and my fans still adore me. You tried alien skulls and chose poorly. Ooh, see that's a reference that I really enjoy because not the reference to Crystal Skull because that movie. That movie has good moments, let's be honest. There are parts of that that are okay, but the movie as a whole, overall, is not great. But he chose poorly is a line from the end of Last Crusade, the, the third movie, and is one of my favorite lines, and I say that all the time. <laughs> whole story got blown up on a sitcom. There's a big bang you can't hide in the fridge for hang up. Hiding in the fridge was from the Crystal Skull. It's, that's become a phrase now. For television, they called it Jumping the Shark, where the, uh, a TV show has been on so long that it's gotten to a ridiculous thing, and it comes from the, an episode of Happy Days, where the Fonz jumped over a shark while he was wearing water skis. Uh, in the Indiana Jones movie, when the movie got so ridiculous, they nuked the fridge, and that was where Indiana Jones was on a bomb blast testing site, climbs into a metal, uh, a metal lined fridge, uh, and shuts the door, and they drop a nuke, and it blasts them all the way, and it fumbles down the thing, and he gets out of it. Uh, which, you know, the landing would have killed him. But it's a movie. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, but yes. Uh, I think there's a Big Bang Theory reference there that I don't get about him uh, blowing up somewhere there. Uh, or, or maybe it was just the Big Bang. Got blown up on a sitcom. Do they mean the Big Bang Theory? Because, like, yeah. There's a Big Bang you can't hide in the fridge from. Big Bang you can't hide in the fridge from, meaning the Big Bang of the nuclear explosion, but also the Big Bang Theory. I don't know that episode. Uh, I don't hate the Big Bang Theory show as a show, but I didn't watch every episode. Hmm. I'll up the whip before you crack a hammer. I think even Mike wants you to quit. Just do it! Ha ha ha! So there's, a, there's Lloyd popping up as... Shia LaBeouf as Mutt Williams, who turns out to be Indiana Jones' son. Spoiler alert, sorry if you haven't seen the fourth movie. This is, It's several years later. Um, so yeah, even Mutt wants you to give up. That was the plan in the original fourth movie, is that they were going to be passing the torch from Indiana Jones on to Mutt Williams. It didn't do that well, and that's probably not going to be a thing that's going to happen with that movie. There's rumors about what's happening in the fifth movie. Yes, there's a fifth Indiana Jones movie coming out, and I'm excited. I don't care. Um... So, there's a, there's a rumor about things going on in that movie. I don't know how valid they are. I know they're going to piss off people no matter what, because that's what happens now. Uh, but, yeah, okay. Hide in the fridge for I'll hang up the whip before you crack a hammer. Think even Mike wants you to quit. Just do it! Uncle Dinosaurs for fun. There's another old geezer. I'll lock his battle up like Winston in the freezer. Ha 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 ha! She's actually fought actual dinosaurs. One of the bosses in the very first game is a 
freaking T-Rex. Um, is it the first game or the second game? Like, the, the PlayStation 1 games. Um, and battle this geezer. I'll lock this battle up like Winston in the freezer. Winston is Laura Croft's butler in the games, a very old guy, moves at the snail's pace through the game, but there's a, a section, I think it's in the third game, either the second or third game, probably the third one, where, no, it's, 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 it might be the second one, regardless, one of the two, uh, where you have a giant freezer in the mansion. You can, like, run around Laura's mansion in, not in a mission, and just run around the house and check out all the stuff. And there's a giant freezer. You hit a button, a huge door opens, and you can like push Winston, like not like physically push him, but like run against him to kind of direct him to walk into the freezer, and then shut the door, and you've locked him in the freezer. Everybody did that. Everybody who played that game did that to Winston. I thought it was really funny that in the movies, the Angelina Jolie movies, Winston wasn't a super old guy. He was younger. He was played by Chris Berry, who played Rimmer on Red Dwarf. Uh, so, yeah, that was... I, I was like, hey, great, we get to see Rimmer again. We, we see Chris Berry, who's an amazing comedic actor, play, play Winston the Butler. That was great. He's usually very, very old in the games. Whatever. And I, just looking at the next line... That belongs in a museum. Indy, because of you always putting things in the museum, you were kind of the bad guy in those movies. <laughs> Sorry, you were stealing artifacts from people who, uh, mm, doesn't hold up anymore. <laughs> I mean, but it was, it was, it's a movie of its period. It's what they did then. I get that. Dinosaurs belong in a museum! I've been served a full course meal of chilled Indian Buddha. They don't even kill as many animals as you do. <laughs> I mean, that's almost slightly racist, but uh, Laura does kill a lot of animals in the game, too, so. Corrupting the youth, they should be outside, not trying to unload the barrels on your thighs. Sex jokes. Not a ditch those pistols akimbo, but you're still the same rich back looking bimbo. A brass and a treasure map to catastrophe, stuff in your knapsack with innocent casualties. There's a, there's a lot to unpack there. Backflipping bimbo is... It's kind of a funny line, because there's so many acrobatics in those early ga days, you, early games that you can do. Just lots of backflips and side flips and all that acrobatic stuff. It's, yeah, good stuff. I, I, yeah. Square Enix didn't watch anymore. That's why they dropped you like a J in the floor. <laughs> Okay, I'm digging all these references mainly because these are two things that I know a lot about. I'm a big Laura Croft Tomb Raider fan, and I'm a big Indiana Jones fan. So, Square Enix didn't want you anymore. Square Enix was the studio that bought IDOS. IDOS was the company that originally did the Tomb Raider games. And Square Enix bought IDOS. And that's, Square Enix released the three Tomb Raider reboot games. And I think since then, uh... Crystal Dynamics, which was also one of the companies that Edis, Idos had, uh, that Squeenix bought, or, or came away from that, and is getting the Tomb Raider IP back. So Crystal Dynamics has it again. And uh, so they dropped you like a J in the floor, meaning from in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, uh, you know, he's walking across the... He, he has to spell Jehovah in order to get through a certain section of the temple to find the Holy Grail. And he first says, all right, let's spell Jehovah. First spell J, and he steps on it, and it breaks through the floor. In the original Hebrew, Jehovah is spelled with an I. Uh, that's the whole thing that goes on with that. Yes, yeah, see, I like these movies a lot. I know a lot of the dialogue. What's wrong with me, pop culture boy? Blah. Yeah. When they designed your core, they ripped my style. When they designed your core, core was also one of the developers of the games. Yeah. Not anymore. That's why they dropped you like a J in the floor. But he designed your core and ripped my style. And jiggled in a bit of girls' polygon wild. Girls' polygon wild. Girls gone wild was a video series. Uh, exploitative. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's everybody was trying to get a look at 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 Laura's polygons back in the day. It's a true thing. All right. You took 3D to uncharted territory, now you're just in uncharted territory! There's the reference that I made at the beginning of this video. Good. Overshadowed by a bright light, no way! Somebody needs to make a tune for your old game. 
<laughs> overshadowed by Drake like Lil Wayne. <laughs> Not not just Nathan Drake, but Drake the singer and Lil Wayne, they're uh, rappers. It's all, you get it, pop culture. If you want to talk, please stick a sorry. That verse was worse than your crap on Atari. I have the Atari Indiana Jones games. Yeah, they're not, they're not great. Oh, Fedora the Explorer thinks he's... Fedora the Explorer. <laughs> okay, that's pretty great. <laughs> It happens a lot, more often than you'd think. Molaram Kalimal pulls the heart out of people, almost gets indies. I'm not a, I'm not a dad. I admittedly have a dad bod, and I've dressed up like Indiana Jones. I'm in this picture, and I don't want to be clicking that report. Whatever. And also, we've got the third Laura Croft costume of the the wetsuit outfit from the games, and also uh, the Angelina movies. Oh. Another movie reference. <laughs> Actually, two movie references. Because Mutt ends up being his kid from Marion, and uh, cutting the rope bridge was a thing in the second movie. So. You're a dog, Indiana, that's fact! The only thing in Royals is a hat, no cap! <laughs> we named the dog Indiana, is what. Indiana's dad says in the movie his name is actually Henry Jones Jr. That's why he keeps calling him Jr. Jr. Uh, Sean Connery, the great. Uh, decent actor, kind of an abusive prick in real life, but whatever. Um, uh, but yes, all that reference. And, and named the dog Indiana. Off like a rope bridge! You're a dog, Indiana, that's fact! The only thing you're loyal to is a hat, no cap! The only thing you're loyal to is a hat, no cap. No cap meaning... Uh, no joke, not kidding, and, uh, you know, a cap is a different type of hat, so it's a double there. Your face straight melted and you lost that smolder, so make like a boulder and roll your ass over! Cause Junior, the baby boomer, beating me a graphic, that's like my nude coat. Never gonna happen. <laughs> and there's the reference to the nude coat again, alright. Uh, that's, that was a decent battle, that was really, really good. Oh, and there's Pitfall on Atari. So, Croy Province, I, it's part of it's cut off on my screen. Uh, so, yeah, that that was really good. Um, and I think this is the ad read at the end here with, with uh, Teddy, so we, we might be skipping this. But uh, for me, I think Laura won. I think Laura Croft won that battle. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. I really dug that. Uh, she had, I think she had better bars, she was, she was also, like, had a couple sections where she was really, really fast, it was really good, and I think had a lot better references to use as jabs. Um, so yeah, I dug that, and even, and even pulled a couple on herself, too, about her own things, so I, I, I definitely dug that. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. Please, uh, leave a comment in the, uh, section below about who you think won. And, uh, we've got the Halloween reactions coming up on Monday for Patreon supporters and Friday for everyone else. Uh, thanks for joining me. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and if you really want to help the channel out, support me on Patreon where you can get to see these videos early, get my music early, exclusive reactions, and all sorts of other cool stuff. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, here she comes. Watch her open that treasure chest Oh, here she comes She's a Tomb Raider Oh, here she comes With her big guns and pistols too Oh, here she comes She's a Tomb Raider